Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, Elder Canada at Redeemer Fellowship. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Well, we made it. they're actually listening to this on a Monday, so that's probably... Yeah. I shouldn't say that. Mm. Sorry, but everybody. Happy Saturday for us. Yeah. Happy Saturday, bro. There we go. We're and everybody good. else gets a happy Monday. We had a... We Mondays had a, are never really happy. The only good thing about Monday is fresh pod. You know what I like about Monday? Is, What's that? Um, I do a lot of sermon prep on Mondays. I, it's a, mostly a study day for me. So I'm, I don't have meetings, and I just get to read and pray and study and write. It's, uh, it's a good time. I like it. There you go. I don't take Mondays. Uh, yeah, no, I just... All I do is emails. <laughs> you're, you're emails and administration. That's my Monday. Yeah, that's not fun. Nope. No fun at all. So uh, how you feeling? Feeling good. Really? Ready. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Okay. You, had a, you already had a, you already had a good start to your day. You, we had the the small group, the community group leaders meeting. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a lot of fun. That was fun. Pastor Pat brings all the community group leaders together. Yep. And then uh, we we talk. We Pat talks a little bit about expectations, and we all kind of share. Where apparently our, we all failed. Well, at I, the expectations. I haven't. No, I didn't really have any. Complaints. Well, you didn't actually. Well, you didn't even make the one. You didn't make the two. What are you talking you know, about? Uh, expectations that he had. Yeah, I do. No, no, you didn't. Yes. No, you didn't. Yeah. Respond to the email. And send the uh, uh, the oh the roster the roster Brian sent the roster yeah yeah but yeah but you didn't know that until Brian said it yeah no Brian sent the I know, roster so I'm just saying the two expectations yeah they were meet. both done yeah by Brian yeah, yeah so yeah. they got done they got done That's but yeah, the, yeah 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 as you didn't okay. need it you didn't no, need it didn't have to I had my people do it I had my your people, people? Do it. that's my podcast that's your- okay. <laughs> You can't bring that in here. No? Oh, no. Okay. Sorry. People don't know what you're talking about. No, nobody would know. So um, we're back on uh, uh, Graham Goldsworthy's yep. Gospel and Kingdom, this little paperback book packed full of covenantal biblical theology yumminess. And uh, today we're in chapter five. Yep. The, chapter five, the covenant and the kingdom of God. So here he's drawing this this connection between you know the, the the covenant or the covenants that run through Scripture, and this idea of a kingdom, and uh, especially as it relates to the Old Testament and how we are making sense of it. So when we start getting into here, uh, into this chapter, and he's talking about the kingdom of God, what does he mean by kingdom? How are we supposed to understand that? I mean, the, you do see kingdom ideas throughout the Old Testament, and then when you get to the New Testament, it gets really crystallized yeah, yeah. Um, in Christ. So in general, how does, uh, how does Goldsworthy explain the, the concept of kingdom? Well, I mean, he talks about it at the bottom of page uh, 53 there says here, uh, the New Testament has a great deal to say about the kingdom, but we may best understand this concept in terms of the relationship of ruler to subjects. That is, there is a king who rules, a people who are ruled, and a sphere where this rule is recognized as taking place. Mm -hmm. Put another way, the kingdom involves three things. First, God's people. Secondly, in God's place. And then third, under God's Rule, and that's on uh, the top of page 54. So 53 and 54 gives us a really good explanation. So Mm -hmm. kingdom of God is um, the God's people in God's place under God's rule. That's probably the simplest way for us to get it, right? God's people in God's place under God's rule. Um, So we see this um, concept of a kingdom, if this is the concept that we're working with, if this is true and biblical, and I think it's it's pretty good. Yeah. What was that? Yeah, some message. It's open table. It's an open table asking me to do brunch or something. All right, got to turn it off. You're doing the open no, table. I don't, do know why, I don't know why I'm getting notifications from open table. Uh, are you going out for dinner nope. today? Nope. Did you go yesterday? Nope. Uh, then I have but no a week idea. ago. Uh, I have no idea. Then now no. you just you gotta just turn off the notifications. I say, will. I'll don't turn spam it off. me. That's what it is. Not the notification. Don't spam, don't spam me, bro. Me. That's what you want to say, okay. bro. Do you even not spam? Mm, that don't that work. Didn't work. It didn't work. No. I'm sorry. Okay. Whatever. Right. Happy Saturday. Enjoy your Diet Coke. Okay, so um, so if this is biblical, and we, and we believe it is, right, yep. that the kingdom of God could be understood as God's people in God's place under God's rule, yeah. where do we see this first um, established in Scripture? Uh, I mean, the garden. You see that verse mm-hmm. in, the, in the Garden of Eden, right, where, where God enters into this covenant, where God is, uh, there's, you have God with God's people. Right. Uh, in God's place, mm-hmm. under God's rule, where he gives this distinct instructions. You can eat and do all this, but do not touch 
and eat of the tree in the middle of the garden, right? That's right. The so tree of the knowledge the, of good the whole, and evil. The whole idea of creaturehood is kind of what, what Goldsworthy right. uh, hits on there. Right. So, you know, again, just because uh, the word kingdom isn't used or the word covenant isn't yeah, used yeah. in uh, Genesis uh, 1, 2, uh, and 3 doesn't mean that the concepts aren't there. And we, we say this all the time. You know, Jesus didn't use the word grace in any of his teaching, yeah. and yet— yeah, so we, we, we know he's all about it's grace. It's yeah. all grace. So uh, the word Trinity, of course, is a yep. theological term, Yep, not in the Scripture, uh, and yet we want to embrace that as Orthodox Christians. So um, all of these things are there, and so we see that it, what um, Goldsworthy says is that that kingdom pattern is established in Eden, but it is corrupted or broken because of the fall. Correct. So when Adam and Eve... Uh, transgress God's prohibition of eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they not only uh, bring about God's displeasure, but God's curse. Mm -hmm. It breaks fellowship with God. So that though God is sovereign and ruling over all, the people of God, Adam and Eve in this particular context, have been in a sense separated from God. Um, And there needs to be some sort of restoration by grace. Now we see this happening in how God relates to Adam and Eve immediately after this, right? Apparently there is a sacrifice of some sort because he clothes them them, with animal skins. And um, and so there is restoration there. But from that moment on in the garden, there is this ongoing promise of a kingdom that would be one day consummated. Yep. Right. So, uh, and we, so we see these, these, these promises of, of a kingdom, uh, hope, in scripture in in different ways don't we yeah i mean first you kind of see uh uh first you see this redemptive act with noah right mm-hmm. after the fall that god still spares god's people his his people his possession he spares mankind but you see the kingdom promised in abraham right right and i love man the noahic covenant is 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 pretty sweet mm-hmm. uh in, in that, you know, it's a it's a covenant of preservation, not only for the people of God, but for all creation until the end. So um, I do, uh, like I, I like that you brought that up, and I know that, you know, Goldsworthy brings that up. Yeah. Um, I, I really like that. I think it's easy for us to skip over that because we want to get to all of these explicitly, like, um, Jesus-oriented yeah, promises. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but that one is foundational to all of these other covenants because without that uh, covenant with Noah— that promise that's made, all of these other covenants, uh, well, they're all, all these other covenants are built upon that. Right? Yeah, yeah. Be, because of this one covenant of preservation, everything else is going to continue. Continue on, yep. So you said the kingdom is promised to uh, Abraham, and, and uh, Goldsworthy says this, and he kind of outlines all of this on page 56. What, uh, in what way is the kingdom promised through Abraham? Like, what are the promises that are made, or what are some of the promises? Yeah, I mean, in, in starting in uh, Genesis 12 and, and after that, um, I mean, what he describes is the covenant is like this agreement between these two parties, but in the sense that the recipient must agree to any of the terms that are proposed. And I think that's something really interesting that Goldsworthy talks about here, is that as as God presents this covenant with Abraham, it's it's not one where Abraham has a you know negotiating tactics or you know stuff like that but here uh it, it's this covenant of one grace and here's here's god's promises to abraham a people who are his descendants is on the top of page 53 a people who are his descendants a land in which they will live and in a relationship with god and that they shall be god's people right yeah that's um so there you see right the yeah. kingdom principle at play and these promises to abraham um, are in one sense they're pretty pretty simple, aren't they? Yeah, right. People, his descendants, a land in which they live, in a relationship with God, and all that they have. So, a lot of people see that, and they begin to draw very straight lines that make sense to them. A people who are his descendants, that's Jews. A land in which they will live, that's you know yeah. Israel, yep. uh, the, the land, um, and uh, a relationship with God in that. All they shall be, that they shall, man, in a, oh gosh, I can't read it all. <laughs> and he says, a relationship with God in that they shall be God's people. It's man, worded a little man, bit weird. Yeah, thanks a lot, Goldsworthy. <laughs> um, it's not just me. Hooray. <laughs> and I'll tell you, this is, um, 
every Christian should be able to say, yes, these promises to Abraham are true, and God will fulfill them Mm -hmm. perfectly. Uh, But how will he fulfill them? And ultimately, we're going to see them fulfilled in Jesus and in the church. Correct. Um, Who are the descendants of Abraham? Well, we're told in the New Testament, in Galatians uh, specifically, that Mm -hmm. all of those who are of faith are the offspring of Abraham. Uh, What will the land that we live in be? Well, it won't just be a, a small slice of land uh, by the Mediterranean, it's going to be um, the whole earth, the new earth given to God's people. And yeah, we will be God's people in this redeemed relationship, one people, Jew and Gentile. Mm-hmm. And so we want to affirm these things as well and say that, yeah, we believe that there is this promise of a kingdom to Abraham and God will keep all of that. Um, but it's not just promised uh, to, to Abraham, it's also uh, foreshadowed, uh, Goldsworthy says, it's foreshadowed throughout uh, the monarchy, right? Throughout the kings, um, David and Solomon in particular, mm-hmm. right? We have um, these prophetic promises of salvation uh, through David. There will be a king who will reign forever, yep. and yep. he will, the, the, the people will be ruled over, the justice yep. will, will be in the land, and there will be no more uh, wickedness. And it also goes into... Um, you know, the prophets, really, mm-hmm. and uh, the prophets who were addressing the issue of of exile and return. Yeah. So we, we've talked about this in an earlier podcast uh, here in this series, how, you know, there was, during that, during that monarchy, this golden era where uh, the Israel was united, but after Solomon, you know, Israel was divided up into two yep. territories, northern and southern, and the northern tribe of Israel or the northern part of Israel— uh, called Israel and the southern being Judah, um, they fell into sin, there was disunity, and they would each in turn be taken into captivity out yeah. of the land, first by the Assyrians in the north and then by the Babylonians in the south. And so the prophets then were addressing people in that context. You're about mm-hmm. to be taken into exile or you are in exile and or you're going to be taken out of exile and be brought back into the land. That's right. I mean, I like the way Goldsworthy kind of puts it on page 55 here. He says this, Solomon's kingdom fails, and this serves to underline what has been apparent all along, that the historical process from Abraham to Solomon always falls short of the glory of God's true kingdom, even though it reveals the nature of that kingdom. Mm. And he jumps down. Uh, the post-exilic prophets, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, continue to direct the eyes of Israel away from their present history to the great future day when the perfect and everlasting kingdom of God will be revealed. Yeah, that's great. It's that future hope, that foreshadowing yeah. of, of this kingdom to come. That's right. And uh, so we've got like the promise and the foreshadowing and the hope yeah. all looking ahead to when it will finally be real. Yeah. Not one that is led by mere messengers of God. Correct. By Placeholders. Human kings, you know, earth fallible prophets. Yeah. Uh, instead, it's going to really uh, come into play when, when Jesus shows up, where the kingdom is at hand, is how Jesus mm. oftentimes says it. Um, the redemptive act, of course, his life, death, and resurrection. Yeah. Um, so this is the kingdom inaugurated, right? Or this is the kingdom... Uh, begun, mm-hmm. but it will not be fully consummated until Christ returns. That's right. And so this kingdom of God, let's think about it this way. The, the the kingdom that's being promised, right, throughout all the Old Testament, leading up to the New Testament, um, we finally have Jesus. Now, the Jews are waiting for this kingdom. They, they haven't been confused on this issue. They know that the Messiah is going to come and he's going to yeah. establish a kingdom. Yeah. They're jonesing for it. I mean, life stinks for them right now. Like, they're... We're okay, so we're 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 in Israel, but it, we're occupied by the Romans. Like yeah. they have the authority, they have the control. Uh, we're basically, you know, just kind of pushed around or tolerated. Yeah. So when are we going to be set free to worship our God and enjoy this land that was promised to us? And then Jesus shows up on a donkey, um, not taking down Rome. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. Yeah. It's pretty. Like, wait, what? Yeah. Thought, what's going on? Where's here? our kingdom, yeah. yo? And Jesus, uh, Jesus is now. What is he doing? What are the marks of the kingdom? God's people in God's place under God's rule. Yeah. So Jesus is starting this right by redeeming a people, and um, 
gathering them together yep. under word and sacrament, right? A yep. word and ordinance in the church where the rule of God. And so there is a spiritual dynamic to the kingdom now without an earthly uh, visible dynamic to it. Yes. So what we're experiencing now is the kingdom of God in part, though it is real, while we await the kingdom of God in full. Yeah, and that, that we await by faith. Yeah, I mean, Goldsworthy kind of talks about this on 56. Jesus is the fulfillment of the promises, but at this stage, the fact that God's kingdom will triumph can only be received by faith. Right. I mean, our current circumstances, not just even for them, but even for us, right? Uh, for the Jews then and, and for us now, uh, our current circumstances, it doesn't, there's no sense or feeling like there's a triumph going on, right? I mean, we were talking about that even on Sunday uh, or on, yes, this last Sunday, you're talking about doubt, yeah. right? And how uh, you, when you look at the psalmist or uh, they would cry out this the, in agony of like, wait a second, you say this, that we will triumph, that your God, that God's people will prevail, but the wicked are the ones who are uh, who are in charge. The wicked are the ones that are uh, have control or they're prospering, Yeah. right? And so we receive by faith, knowing that despite our present circumstance, despite our our mourning, despite uh, our situations, we know that that Jesus will come, the kingdom will be consummated, and we will behold him in glory and be gathered together as God's people, under God's rule. Yeah. So we still have the same thing that God's people have had from the beginning, ever yes. since the fall, longing for the fulfillment. Mm-hmm. So we taste it now. We have it now, but only in part. Yeah. And so that if, if we miss out, if you know, if we have this kind of weird theonomic like approach to uh, Christian living, we're gonna say like, oh well, we're gonna bring in the fullness of the kingdom yeah. uh by by implementing uh, God's law in uh, in every government. Whereas you know, in reality, uh, until Jesus returns, there will always be a real, not just uh, longing, but there was going to be a legitimate absence mm-hmm. of a demonstration of God's rule and righteousness in the world, and there's going to be a need for it. So we have to look forward. We have to long for it. But we do gain a sense of real contentment and satisfaction yeah. in that there is the kingdom now. It is already here, mm-hmm. but it is not yet here in full. Yep. And so... If the kingdom wasn't here in any way, it would be, I think, a lot harder for us. Um, I remember, I remember when I was at Moody Bible Institute, and uh, I had a professor. Uh, he uh, he was I don't know what he was teaching on, but somehow he got onto the kingdom, and uh, he was saying, "Well, that when, when Jesus talks about the kingdom, he's talking about the millennial kingdom, the thousand year reign, uh, and you know, a literal future thousand year reign, mm-hmm. which I didn't believe in, mm-hmm. and I still don't now." But um, what? But we just saw the blood moon. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so he said the kingdom, and I, so I asked the question. I went, so wait, when Jesus says kingdom of God, he's referring to the future kingdom in um, in the thousand year reign all the time. And he's like, yeah. And obviously, this was just one professor. This is not all dispensationalists. Yeah, so yeah, progressive yeah. dispensationalists. But I remember thinking, and I remember asking him. I said, well, what about in Luke eleven twenty? When, when Jesus is accused of doing spiritual work, healing, casting out demons in particular, uh, by the power of the devil, and uh, and Jesus says, "Hey, dummies! Uh, if the devil was defeating himself, he wouldn't be a very good devil." Yeah. yeah so yeah. don't be stupid. Uh, but then he says this: Jesus says, "But if I cast out um, demons by the by the finger of God or by the spirit of God, the kingdom has come upon you." Yeah. So Jesus and Paul all speak about the kingdom as not only a future hope and anticipation, but also as a present reality. We are in the kingdom. There is a, there is entrance into the kingdom, like you said, Jimmy, by faith. By faith in Christ, we all enter into it. And once we're in the kingdom, we are now declared citizens of that kingdom. Yeah. F- citizens with full rights and privileges, yep. saints, right, by God's making. Uh, it it, per, it reorients our allegiance right? It reorients our expectations and it changes the way it should change the way that we even feel about this world. Yeah. So then how is it that as, as those in the kingdom, as those awaiting the kingdom, the consummation of the kingdom, how should that impact how we live our lives now? Well, when I think about it, I think one of the ways that it, it should impact me 
is to hold on to the things of this life a bit more loosely mm. um, and not to treat them as if they are eternal or of primary importance. So, so you're going to cut back on cigars. You're going to, uh, you're going to let loose on those cigars. Well, no, I'm letting loose of, uh, of, of not my, smoking of, them? of my lungs. Oh, you're going to, I'm going to let loose of <laughs> health. I'm going to let I'm loose gonna, of oxygen. I'm not going to, I don't want to make an idol out of health. Okay. So I'm smoking cigars. That's what I'm I love saying. You yeah. just no, that's that right. I will listen. I will fight for my right <laughs> to, to smoke. smoke. So, um, yeah, so I, th- I think we, in general, it's like we, we have to appreciate all of these gifts in the world, whether it's yeah. our family or our jobs yeah. or our hobbies or cigars or whatever, yep. and, and say, these are gifts from God. I want, want to enjoy them. But uh, these things uh, are not the most important things. Correct. Uh, instead, I need, to, I need to see them as secondary to God, to his word, and to the kingdom. But at the same time, I think that if we... Um, are truly citizens of another kingdom, another realm, and yet we live here, like Peter says, as sojourners, then we should have a different, not just a different value system, but a different way of being and living. So when we look at politics, when we look at social issues, when we look at sin, evil, uh, any of those things, we aren't merely adopting current worldly philosophies to help us make sense of them, like well, the Republican platform or the yeah. Libertarian platform or the Democratic platform. Instead, we are taking a step above all of that to allow the scripture and the kingdom that forms us to live here as sojourners. This is not our home. Not yet. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know. That, that's some of the things that I'm thinking about. What about you? When you think about the fact that we are members of a kingdom that is here in part, we're awaiting its longing. And while we're mm-hmm. here, what? how should that impact the way that how do you think it should impact the way that you live? I think, I mean, all those things you said, but I think it should also fuel uh, evangelism. Definitely. I think it should also be fueling our desire uh, for God to be gathering his people together, for God yeah. to be calling uh, his elect. Right. And so I think that we should be loving our, our communities, our neighbors, our families, and, and preaching the gospel. Yeah. So that, because we, we know of this future hope. Uh, that we have, and they may, and and they don't, and we know what awaits those uh, who do not have the same hope that we do, and so I think that should really compel us to love and to care uh, and to share uh, the good news that we have in Christ. And it's man, it's free. You know what I yeah, mean? Like we should it. be so eager to tell people. Yeah. It, it's the God just offers it to you. You can be forgiven and restored to be a member of this kingdom. Like, look, like, okay. When you and I fly, we, we, are, we exist in different kingdoms. Okay, is that fair to say? I think I, I, I think there's a different there's there's definitely some I think class I, differences when we fly. I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm on another level. Yeah, you're yeah. definitely on another level. I'm on another level. You're on another now right, so, section. <laughs> now here's the thing: if I want into that level, mm-hmm. I have to. Well, first of all, I have to do something on the internet. I don't know. How to yeah, do that. you mean something okay. called sign up for air miles? I don't even know what that is. So, anyways, I got to do that. And just so you know, that's free. Okay, fine. But then I'm still not even because I have that I'm not going to be in your kingdom. I you got to fly. A bit I got to fly a lot. Yeah, to, yeah, a lot of flying. Yeah, but here's the thing: because of your speaking, okay, you, well, you could. just stop. Let me make my point. <laughs> let, me, let me make my point. All right, make your point. The point is, is like there is no free pass into your level into your kingdom mm. when we're flying. No, I got to pay for that. Yep, in one way or another. Yep. And, and, and it was pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It looks nice pretty up nice there. in there. It look, it, I like, oh, it's great. I like, it's comfy. The, the like chairs the, are They nice won't even me. let me get past the curtain. No, I'm like, hey, no, man, no, I no. just want to talk to Jimmy. Nope. They're like, I'm sorry, nope. sir. Tell him no. I, I, I tell him no. I say, don't the, don't make us call security. Yeah. <laughs> get the air marshal over here. <laughs> I'm like, no, no. If a short bald guy goes, you know, tell him no. Yeah. So um, I send I send back uh, my half drink. Yeah, I know. Diet Coke. Thanks. And that's warm and flat. <laughs> By the time it gets Thanks, to the back. <laughs> but, but your warm flat one gets to me that you send back sooner than my new one gets to me by the time they wheel the cart back. And then they're like, oh, we're out of Diet Coke, but we have Diet Shasta. I'm like, Stop. oh, jeez. No, nah, it's okay. So, but the kingdom of God, man, yeah. it's so glorious. Yep. And God's like, no, I, you can't pay for this. You could never afford this. No. I'm giving it to you. All you must just here, deny yourself and follow my son. Like, mm-hmm. believe in him. So, yeah, I, I love that, Jim. I think that's a great point that we should be about evangelism if we believe in the kingdom. Absolutely. So, all right. As you're reading the Old Testament, one of the themes that you're going to want to pay attention to is that of the kingdom. Yeah. Um, 
when you any book that you're in, where is Israel? What's happening right there? And how does this relate to or promise a future kingdom? Yeah. Um, and that is going to help you to see the fulfillments that that come in the New Testament um, when Jesus arrives. Uh, what's up next, Jimmy? I think we're gonna we're gonna start to summarize some of the covenants. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have one last one. If I'm thinking correctly, if I'm looking at the uh, uh, table of contents here. So on your own, read through the kingdom revealed in Eden, Israel's history, prophecy, uh, and Jesus Christ. And at that point, we're probably going to focus more on the kingdom revealed in Jesus yeah. Christ to kind of summarize all those other ones, but really want to hit the kingdom revealed in Jesus Christ Chapter nine. And, and conclude there. Yeah. So uh, get on it. It's a little book, right? So you got half of it to go. Mm -hmm. um, get on it, read it. And we want you to uh, read this along with us. Uh, we want you to share what you're reading. Share good quotes. Uh, mm -hmm. Let other people that you are doing this with us, you can use the hashtag on social media. Learn, Learn with, with Joe, Joe Fo. Fo. Learn with Joe Fo. Fo show. Yeah, that's Well, fun. no, don't add that last part. And um, hashtag Learn with Joe Fo. Fo show. <laughs> <laughs> Might get, might get confused. <laughs> yeah, that's going to get confusing. That's going to get confusing. Um, so yeah, do that and uh, let us know what other books. We've already got some really good recommendations yep. that people want us to, yep. to peek you. into. Um, so we're going to check it out. Listen, this Friday, we finally have a new episode of Pastors and Cars Smoking Cigars that's going to drop. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. Get ready for it. Uh, you guys have been asking for it. So um, yeah, we're going to answer a question about, well, some basic questions about Calvinism, Calvinism and Reformed theology. Oh, that's right. In my head, I, I was could see like, you looking at me. I'm with looking a at panic you. Like, look. I don't remember recording these. Yeah. <laughs> now I remember. Yeah. Once you said that, now I get it. I yeah. remember now. So, Pastors and Cars, Smoking Cigars is back this Friday. So, mm -hmm. get ready for it. And um, Jimmy, if they want to help us out, if they want to be a part of uh, of Team Jofo, what do they do? Yep, you can uh, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo, or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. Uh, over at the website, the new website, DoctrineDevotion.com. There you can uh, sign up for our email blast. You can hit up the store, uh, and you can check out all the content that we have there. Fresh Pod every Monday and Thursday, blog posts on Wednesdays, videos during the week, <laughs> a lot of times Fridays. Later. Later.